Hi guys, I'm Chef Phil, here again with another exciting dessert. This dessert is, a, is definitely a crowd pleaser, it's a chocolate tart. Basically it's a set of ganache in a lovely crispy pastry. But today we're going to lift it and we're going to add um, Terry's chocolate orange to it. Absolute crowd pleaser chocolate orange. So we're going to put some uh, orange zest into the, into the pastry and we're going we're gonna to set the ganache with the chocolate orange. Right guys, let's get down to business. Right guys, let's get down to the pastry. Straight in with the butter, pinch of salt. Two dessert spoons of sugar, cast of sugar, and just rub, rub, rub together. So this is 200 grams of flour to 100 grams of butter. To two tablespoons of sugar to a pinch of salt. We're rubbing this together till, it, till we get a nice crummy consistency. Again, do not use your palms, touch your fingertips. Nip, nip the butter into the flour. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Move as fast as you can because your hands are going to get warm. The aim to this is keep your hands as cool as you can. So the faster you move, the better your pastry is going to come out. As you can see. Now we're at that stage. We're going to get an orange. When you're zesting oranges, just do the top. Try not to get too much of the pith in there, you just want the outer pith. These have been rinsed and dried, but they're organic oranges anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. That's all we wanted was a couple of orange strands in there, and we're gonna rub that into the pastry to give it a nice flavor. As you can see, the smells are lovely. And what will happen, they'll bake into the pastry. As you can see, wet, tan, wet, wet sand texture. Six tablespoons of cold water, bring together. Don't want to oversaturate your pastry, keeping it going. Bring it together nicely. Try and compact it together rather than squeeze it together. So what you're looking for is a nice short pastry with this one. That could do with one more teaspoon just to bring it together. Tablespoon I mean. There we go. Just a tiny bit. Like getting the moisture right in this, we don't want it over wet. We want this to be a nice, short, crumbly pastry. Like I said, just bring it together. It should clean the bowl. Once you get to that stage where it's cleaning the bowl, you know your pastry is ready to go into the fridge. The pastry, what we've got to blind bake as well, because it's a chocolate tart, it's not going back in the oven. This baked, this is a set chocolate tart, not a baked chocolate tart. So we're just going to push that. As you can see, I'm not I'm just compacting it, I'm not squeezing it too much because we don't want to release the gluten which will stamp in the pastry. So we're going to just squash that down as lightly as we can, not overwork it. As you can see we just brought together lightly. Now we're going to place it into a freezer bag. This can go straight into the fridge. And we'll put this in the fridge for 10 minutes once it's gone so I can manage to get the freezer bag open. That'll be now placed in the fridge for half an hour and then we'll come back and line this pastry tray. Right guys, the pastry's had a good half an hour to 20 minutes in the fridge and it's got a nice stiff consistency to it. Just gonna give it a quick knead, bring it back to room temperature. It's a very short, short pastry this. That's what we want for this. Nice crumbly short pastry. together nice lightly flour board twice up just keep going in one direction spin it same again you can see the orange in the pastry it's going to give a lovely fragrant 
texture and taste to it while when it's cooking the orange will seep through the pastry and it'll be very very zesty Cookie back onto his back. Nice grease proof, a tin what's been nice and greased. Pull the pastry into it again, like I said before, guys. Lift and push. Lift the pastry and push into the tin. Do not try and force the pastry in, or so you'll end up then. Here's this overstretched pastry, it's like elastic when it cooks in the oven. It'll just seep down the sides. Make sure it's right up into the corner. This is going to be a blind bake pastry. So what we're going to do, we're going to line this pastry tin with cling film. Once the pastry is lined and trimmed, place cling film in it. I like to use cling film because I can get right up into the edges. So push the cling film right up against the pastry, into the edges, getting all the air out of it. Line it a couple of times because when you're lifting then you'll be able to get whatever you whatever you're blind baking it. There's numerous things you can blind bake with. Today we're gonna blind bake with rice. I've done it with flour, I've even done it with two pence pieces. But today I'm using some rice. Get all the air out of it, squash it right up into the corners, showing the pastry is done. I'm gonna use a full bag of this rice, this aborio rice. Could be any rice, you can use any rice if you want. It just so happens that we have this, so I'm gonna fill this right. This can be used again after, don't worry about it. It won't spoil the rice or anything in any way. In fact, if anything, it'll give it a nice nutty, nutty flavor when you go to cook with it. Because I use this for risotto, so I will be using this rice again because I don't believe in just wasting stuff. A lot of people use peas and things like that and keep them in a bowl, but I'd rather just use something fresh every time and then just keep moving on. Basically, just use what you have in your cupboard. Makes life easier. Right, this is gonna go in a preheated oven for 20 to 25 minutes till it gets a nice firm texture. Then we're gonna take it out and put it back in for 10 minutes till it goes golden brown. Right, guys, here we go. Right, guys, it's had a good 20 minutes in the oven. I'm gonna take out the rice and as you can see, the pastry is still quite raw in the middle, so what we're going to do, we're going to replace this back in the oven for a further 10 minutes till everything crisps up, and then we've got a lovely crisp shell to put as chocolate ganache in. Right guys, now for the ganache. As you can see, the pastry has gone nice and crisp. We've got 125 grams of dark chocolate, 200 mils of double cream, 150 grams of chocolate orange, Terry's chocolate orange. When I can finally get into it. Squeeze off of orange in there to get just add to that extra flavor. A nice tablespoon of um, dessert spoon of uh, golden syrup and then what we're going to do we're going to melt this on a low heat and then I'll come back and show you what we'll do then as you can see guys that's been brought together lovely to a nice nice ganache consistency and what we're going to do we're going to slowly add this to the top showing that this filling just let it flood naturally get peeling in the corners Get that a little tap. 
don't tap too hard because you don't want your pasted to bake underneath. But we just want the chocolate to even out nicely. As you see, can see, it's found its natural natural level. What we're going to do, we're going to finish it off with some of our gold, gold fairy dust cake, cake decor. This just gives it a nice finish as it's setting. Gives it that luxurious feel. That's going to get a three hours in, in the fridge. When we come back to that, it'll be nice and solid and ready. Hi guys, here we are again. I'm just finishing off now. I took it, after the, took it out of the fridge after four hours. Let's cut it, see what it looks like. Quick tip guys, if you want to cut this straight, put your knife in some hot water beforehand and it should give it a nice even slice as you can see. It's got a lovely texture to it. You want it as perfect as you can guys to give it that nice smooth look. As you can see guys, absolutely perfect.